It's another K-Town beat. YouTube, 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 it's your boy, Mr. Alana. I'm back. I got this, you know, the new technique. It's not new. I went back to it. I used to do it in older videos. I'm just reintroducing the technique, how you can get a great transition on your blends, on any blend. You know, if you're doing a taper, if you're doing a, a drop fade, ball fade, mid fade, light fade. It's all about creating a transition. Now, I'm using the balding clipper right here, right? Uh, from Wall that they sent me. I told y'all that on the video. This this is a nice clipper just to have. Uh, you can do a couple things with it. You can shape it up. You can get it balled just like that. You see, it gets it really, really close so you don't have to put a lot of work on your trimmers. Now, you make your first guy line. Now, this is where the transition what I was talking about with the fade, how I'm going about it different. So here I got a one guard on. So I got the one guard closing. You know, I like to do open and close everything to teach people how to cut. But for this, you want to go one close and you want to go up almost like a full inch, right? Because we're not going to put a, a, a C cup on him. We just doing, you know, a, a high taper. So you go up one, then you come back with no guard and you clean up that bottom, that first line. Now, in between where the one guard made that guideline and, and in between where the balding clipper made the first guideline, that in between those two areas is where you get the transition that you want. You, you can already see it happening. So the the uniqueness of this technique or the you know the let me see the the usefulness of this technique is to get you to get the transition going you know what i mean just to just so you can see it better right that, it's not really the word i want to use i can't think of it but that's what it is right you really get in that transition with that and you can kind of see how you can get everything else to just fall in place with that now also i'm using a one and a half right here and i'm just cleaning up the book above where i put the one guard closed that so all right so now it's different levels so now after that after that one guard made that guideline all i gotta do is stay above that and clean that up clean that guideline up right and you know when you're cutting make sure you're using your thumb to stretch the skin like i do on all the fades you know you want to do that you want to make sure that you're stretching the skin I come back with the one guard i'm still doing the exact same thing i'm you know um uh detailing right now i'm using the corner of the blade because i want to I want to blend it. I don't want to make hard lines. So in order to not make hard lines, you have to use the corner of the blade, right? That's going to get you where you want to be because some of the bulk is not going to come out right away just with you using the guards. You have to use the corner to get it out. Even when you don't have a guard on, you still have to do the exact same thing. Right, and like I said, you can see this transition. The only thing that we need to do here is use clip over comb, like I do in mostly all my videos. You want to incorporate clip over comb because, like I said, sometimes guards just don't do what you need them to do, right? So now I'm just knocking the bulk and blending it and trying to make sure everything is lining up just right. And this fade is already coming along. I see just a, you know, a little bit of work I have to do right here. But like I said, once you get the transition area down, then you can work around all that. You can work up high above the transition point, and then you can work down low below the other, you know, below the transition point. So. In between the two guidelines, the first guideline and the second guideline, when you're using this technique, you actually skipping a step to go to the second step. So, you know, like normally you go no guard. Uh, uh, I mean, you go make a hard guideline. Then you'll come and try to remove that first guideline. Well, with this technique, you go 
hard guideline, then you go, you skip whatever step that you would use, uh, you know, any other time and go to the next step. So if you normally go, you know, tremor, no guard, one guard, two, uh, one and a half, two, you would skip and go tremor, one guard, one and a half or two, right? Because you want to create transitions, just depends on the thickness of the hair. So then you can see the levels. So, you know what I mean? You can, that's the purpose of doing it this way. And like I said, you want to incorporate clip over comb because now everything is flowing just exactly how I want it. Now, since I got that done, I can work on the front of his hairline because you see it's, it's we needed to lay down a little bit in order to put a great line on it so here you can use either a two guard or you can use a one and a half guard whatever you want to do this depends on the thickness of the hair and knock it down right and you just want to stay on the edges we're not trying to go back into his hair and change all that up but we just want to lay everything down and make it smooth so we can put a good line on it right and after you do that, you just turn them around and you do the same thing on the other side. Now, on this side, we do the exact same thing. So, I want to speed it up a little bit. I don't really like to make the video super long. So, I always go in detail, deep detail on the first side. But, I want you to watch. I don't want to speed it up too much. I speed it up just a little bit. But watch how I make the first guideline, then I come back with the one guard and fade in between, and then go with the one and a half, two guard, whatever. And then I come back and I use, you know, the clip over comb also. And I also use my thumb to stretch the skin. Now, before I start the lineup on this type of haircut, because he had the top they like to have is sponge, I like to put, uh, I like to do my sponge method before I do the lineup because I want to see how the hair is going to sit, where everything is going to be before I get to put my line on it. So, uh, this is a good technique to use. Like I say, you just put, you know, like a cream, a, a leave in conditioner, and then you just want to you know, get it right and do your little sponge technique. After that, you want to get your Mr. Outliner Detailing Mist, right? If you don't got it, get it. Check my description box. It's MrOutliner.com, no dot, right? Now, you want to spray the mist onto the forehead onto the hairline area before you do the lineup and then after you do that before it dries before it sits in you want to be able to brush the hair down right 
want to brush it down so you can see everything that you're working with right here then after that you want to assess where you want to put the line now you can see it's a little higher on this side than it is on this side it's a lot to work with on the right side of the screen as opposed to the left side but um with that being said you kind of want to start in the middle see like how you can try to get this to line up and you know you probably want to use your mirror so by that side being higher on the left we want to come up to where it's at but not compromise it too much right because if we try to make an imaginary line under that one it's it's not gonna come out good so in some cases you have to go back just a little bit but that's his natural part of his hairline It's nothing like i'm pushing it back further than what it is right so that's the only time when it's suitable to like go back on the edge up and it's really not going back it's really you just following the hairline right so and on the sides on the like you know the lines on the side then you know you just want to tap it and pull inward you know towards the nose area when you're doing the line up on the sidebars because if you just push back towards the ear then you're going to push back the line up I know you can't really see it on this side, but I'll show you better on the other side. So just remember that when you're doing the lineup too, take your time, use the corners, make sure you're trying to get, you know, mostly everything short. And because we're going to use enhancements on this, it's not seriously crucial for me to get it super sharp at this point. And also sometimes when you line them up like this, you can see like, like on a high fade you can see like oh okay i need to clean it up more towards the front so the, you know when you line it up you you get to see the overall picture and that's another reason why i did the sponge on him before that because i want to be able to see what he's gonna see at home so i can make my adjustments if i think is not right i can make my adjustments you see right here what I was, I'm pointing at is that, oh, I need to clean that up a little bit just to make the taper look that much better. Now, as you can see, I cleaned it up uh, on that side after I got the line kind of how I want it. Now, I can focus on this side. So, this is a little tricky because you have to bring this side up for sure, right? And it has to match the other side. So, what we're doing right here, we just starting kind of like from that middle point. Look at your mirror. You see this is coming down over here. You're going to have to bring it up. I like to do it slowly, right? I try to bring it up slowly and sometimes you have to come to the other side where you're actually doing the lineup at to get the lineup to to line up right 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 and it's going to take a while some like i said just make sure you're using your mirror though and starting from that middle point so that your line can go straight across just like it is on the other side And now, like, on the sidebar, what I was trying to tell you on the other side, you want to pull inwards. You see how I'm pulling the in? You want to pull inward just to make sure that you're not actually pushing the hairline back, you know. So these are some of the things, that techniques you can use to help you along with your lineups and your fades. You know, it's always a system to everything. So I do the exact same thing on every haircut, right? So once you kind of get the edge up where you want it, 
you can look at it. Like I said, you can look in the mirror. I see that it's off a little bit. But once you actually get the line up kind of like you want it, then you can use your enhancements because you already have a foundation of where the line is going to go. So then you get your hair fiber. I use hair fiber. Some people use color. I like hair fiber because of the building technique, and I use go fiber in the, that's the type of fiber that I use, right? Which is go fiber. Now, I like it because it, it's organic and it looks natural. If you spray it right, it's going to look natural. But you need an automizer too just to help you out. So we just want to fill in the light spots to match the top of his hair. You see how dark the top of his hair is? You want to use the Mr. Outliner uh, Detailing Mist to lock in those hair fibers also, right? So when you're doing the fibers and you're using the cardboard or you know postcard or whatever you're using to actually make the hair fiber sit where you want it to sit we put the cardboard or the postcard exactly where we put the line in already that way when this goes away because it's going to go away so once it goes away he'll have his hairline intact. It won't be a false hairline, like it's not a fake hairline, right? It's just a enhancement of the hairline. It's just making it darker, so making it, you know, look fuller and sharper at the same time. So that's, what, that's the purpose of doing the lineup first before you do the hair fibers. Some, if you're putting hair fibers on before time, it's not actually, you can't see a line, right? That's why I like to dry shade with the razor because sometimes when you put lather on it or something like that, you can't really see the hairline. You, you're not able to see exactly where you put in the razor or the trimmer, you know, but in this case, it's the trimmer. So once we do that, we put the hair, the, uh, the hair fiber on, in the same place where we made the lineup, now we can come in and really sharpen everything. Because also what the hair fiber does, it, as it enhances that line, it, it makes it where you can see, you know, where the line needs to be also, right? Where, where anything might be hanging off, right? So this is the, this is the last of the outline. This is the, the final print right here, right? So I'm taking my time and I'm just, I'm executing this thing, you know what I mean? I'm surgical with this thing, you feel me? So you take your time in doing the edge up. That's the biggest thing that I can give you to take away from here is to make sure you take your time with the lineup, right? And it might not always be super straight across, but, you know, make sure you use your mirror to help you out, you know? Step back from it if you have to, you know? so. For, for this haircut, you know, it took me a little while to, to get his edge up down because one side was actually higher. Plus, I'm trying to, you know, make sure that you're able to see exactly what I'm doing here because I, I want you to get the same results that I'm getting, right, with a little practice. So, anyway, that's the video. Um, the, two, the, the transition technique try it out let me know if how it works for you also the hair fiber technique what i'm telling you uh use that let me know how it works for you and everything you know what i'm saying but you know how we do it but anyway until next time don't forget like comment subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend you know how we do it until next time love peace and hair grease i'm out